and energy production. The example of them is what is called, is this Smith Lamley Ortiz syndrome? That syndrome has the ability to affect the production of cholesterol, particularly if the part where it affects the production of 70 hydrocholesterol reduct 70 hydrocholesterol. 7 reductants. That enzyme does not get produced and hence the production of cholesterol is actually affected. So there could be some reactions or some disorders that could lead to the deviations in the production of cholesterol and as such, such isoprenoids cannot be produced and when they are not produced, their end products cannot actually be produced. Donico if not produced, protein protein could be affected. Ubiquinone is not produced. Energy production is going to be affected because coenzyme Q cannot be produced. Are we together? At this point, because of the decarboxylation reaction, you would notice that the end product that you have here is actually no longer going to have six carbons, but it will have five carbons. So isopentanyl, as the name already suggests, isopentanyl pyrophosphate has five carbons. Next reaction is isopentanyl pyrophosphate gets isomerized. Allow me to just abbreviate this as IPP, isopentanyl pyrophosphate. Isopentanyl pyrophosphate would undergo an isomerization reaction and it's going to produce dimethyl allyl pyrophosphate. Two there, CH2. This, friends, is a dimethyl allyl pyrophosphate, and this is actually produced in an isomerization reaction. Isomerize, isomerization. So this enzyme here is an isomerase. It isomerizes, while this one, which is transferring here, is going to be a transferase. Transferase enzyme. So your end product here is dimethyl allyl. Dimethyl has two. It's actually dimethyl allyl, and it has a methyl group there and there. Abbreviated dimethyl allyl pyrophosphate (DPP). Let's put it as DPP. Dimethyl allyl pyrophosphate. This is your product that is going to be produced. This dimethyl allyl pyrophosphate also has five carbons like isopentanyl pyrophosphate. And at this point now, this is where you start seeing condensation of these molecules in a series of reactions, whereby this dimethyl allyl would then combine with an isopentanyl pyrophosphate to produce another molecule. So since this has five carbons, it combines with another molecule with five carbons. How many carbons do you expect at the end of the day? It's going to have 10 carbons. So the next reaction, an isopentanyl pyrophosphate is going to come in, which is that, and the end product would have 10 carbons. Structure-wise, it will look something like this. Three, and in the process, pyrophosphate is going to come out to drive this reaction of condensation. The enzyme here is going to be a transferase as well, and we will have. CH2, CH3, 
Guys, this here has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 carbons. This molecule is called geranium by phosphate. This has 10 carbons. The next reaction is actually going to involve an addition of another pyrum phosphate. We are almost there, guys, by the way. That's so you know. So hang in there. Allow me to remove this stuff also, since we know it by now. <laughs> So the next thing is that on to guaranteed pyrophosphate, you are going to receive another isopentanium pyrophosphate that is going to come in. So this molecule would still be combined with guaranteed pyrophosphate, and the end product would look just similar to this in structure, but it will have 15 carbons. So it's a matter of adding something like this from there. This process also releases pyrophosphate, also catalyzed by a transferase. You can still show this if you like. CH3, just so you can remember how things are moving. So just copy the structure of this and suffer less. There, CH2O pyrophosphate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Correct. So this molecule of fifteen carbons that is produced is called phanesyl pyrophosphate. Phanesyl pyrophosphate. Phanesyl pyrophosphate has 15 carbons. And after you produce phanesyl pyrophosphate, the next reaction would involve the condensation of two molecules of phanesyl pyrophosphate, all of them with 15 carbons. So phanesyl pyrophosphate. Another phanesyl pyrophosphate comes in with its 15 carbons, the end product should have how many carbons? 30. So the end product is squalene, which has 30 carbons. Squalene. Yes, it has 30 carbons. And the next reaction is another series of reactions which will convert this squalene into a steroid ring. In fact, some of the reactions would involve monooxygenase. Oxygenase, like squalene monooxygenase, and it would also involve reduction and now maybe the hydroxylation reaction that is actually going to occur would be 
to production of a steroid ring, and this molecule is called lenosterol. This lenosterol also has 30 carbons. It is the first steroid molecule produced in cholesterol synthesis. Squalene is linear, lenosterol is a steroid because it has a steroid nucleus and it will have those four rings. Finally, in a series of other reactions involving formation of bonds, which also involving removal of um, some of the, the carbons, it will change the 30 carbon denosterol into cholesterol. And there you have it. Cholesterol is produced in such a manner in the cells of the body. So these are the reactions of cholesterol synthesis and what I want you to focus on particularly here is not to master the whole series of reactions but I think what you have to look at is some of the key molecules produced in cholesterol synthesis and all the biochemical issues related to them. For example, the isoprenols, how are they important? All right? Isoprenols, isopentanyl pyrophosphate. Cholesterol is also an isoprenoid. It's actually um, an isoprenoid with a steroid ring because it's derived from isopentanyl pyrophosphate. You should also think about how much ATP is produced to produce cholesterol. Because for example, just to produce isopentanyl pyrophosphate, we're able to use about three ATPs. So for every isopentanyl pyrophosphate, you're using three ATPs, which means to produce um, Phanesyl pyrophosphate, which has, which has 15 carbons produced from three molecules of isopentanyl pyrophosphate, you use uh, three times three, nine carbons. And then to produce a 30 carbon cholesterol, you actually use two phanesyl pyrophosphate, so you use 18 ATPs to produce cholesterol. Do you see that? So production of cholesterol would require a lot of ATP, and this ATP comes in in the formation of isopentanyl pyrophosphate. Finally, in closing, I just want to re-emphasize or probably reintroduce the issue of the breakdown and excretion of cholesterol. I told you that when this steroid molecule cholesterol has been produced, the cells of the body cannot break it down. Because they cannot completely break this down, cholesterol is actually going to be converted into different other molecules. Primarily, it's going to be converted into bowel salts. So, bowel salts would actually be what we call conjugated bowel acids. Bowel acids are a derivative of cholesterol and there are particularly two main bowel acids that are going to be mentioned or in existence. There is what is called cholic acid and kenodeoxycholic acid. So these are the two bowel acids. Cholic acid and kenodeoxycholic acid. These are referred to as bowel acids. And you know the bowel acids are going to be crucial in many things, particularly in emulsification, in formation of my cells to carry the fat into, um, into the cells, into the, uh, the enteric cells, and so on and so forth. These bowels, when they get conjugated by addition of amino acids, particularly two amino acids, there is addition of an amino acid taurine and the addition of an amino acid glycine. They will produce what is called bowel salts. So particularly bowel salts are conjugated 
bile acid. So kenodioxycholic uh, acid, if it gets taurine, it becomes taurocholic acid or taurocholic acid, the two bile salts. Or if it gets glycine, glycocholic acid or glycocholic acid. These are all bile salts. So cholesterol is excreted in form of bile salts, enters the extrahepatic tissue, the extrahepatic circulation rather, or finds itself in the intestines where it is going to be used in the process of digestion. It can also be further degraded to derivative of cholesterol and ultimately it can be excreted in the body in such a manner. So friends, that could be about cholesterol synthesis. Do we have any questions? Yes, sir.